How's it going guys? Does your LCD screen has this kind of problem? If yes, then keep watching cause I'm about to show you how to fix it. First I want to get over one misconception that people has about this problem. Usually when someone sees fading segments, missing lines or something similar wrong with their LCD screen, they think that there's a problem with the LCD screen itself. But actually most of the time it's a uh, problem that's related to the connections, not the LCD screen. The thing is that the connections that your LCD screen has over some time, they can go bad. And when that happens, it means that uh, your LCD screen doesn't receive the signal that is responsible for switching uh, each of the pixels of the LCD screen. Therefore, you have these problems with fading pixels or something similar. In this case, what you have to do to fix the screen is to re-establish the connections that over time went bad. And to do that, you should be familiar how the connections were originally made. Because of that, I will go over two of the most common techniques that are used to establish LCD screen electrical connections. And after that, I will show you real-life examples of me fixing these kind of connections. First way how electrical connections are created is using so-called zebra connector. Zebra connectors are usually rectangular shaped connectors that are made out of rubber-like material that consists from conductive and non-conductive layers. Here you can see one example of this kind of connector. If you would zoom in on its surface, you would see the small layers that this connector is made of. Basically, you can think about these layers same as you would think about small wires separated by an isolating material. If you would want, you could also measure the resistance of these conductive layers as I'm doing it here right now. You can see that the resistance is much higher than it would be for a metallic conductor, but for LCD applications that's just fine. Now let's look at the LCD itself. If we are looking at its connection area in the right angle at light, we can see a lot of small thin stripes here. These stripes are the electrical connections of the LCD screen. They are made out of a thin conductive transparent material that is responsible for delivering electrical charge to a certain area of the LCD screen so that the liquid crystal in that area could change its orientation and in result we can see those areas turning on or off. Basically you can think of this conductive layer same as you would think of uh, copper traces of a PCB board. Now if we look how everything stacks up, we can see our PCB board at the bottom, then comes our zebra connector and then the LCD screen at the top. Hopefully from knowing this you can see now how the PCB board is connected to the LCD screen using zebra connector. Second option for establishing electrical connections between PCB board and LCD screen is flexible printed circuit or FPC for short. You can think about FPC same as you would think about a PCB board with copper traces, only in this case the material of the PCB board is flexible. Here you can see an example of FPC that is used to connect the PCB board of a calculator to its screen. In this case, the connection between the FPC and the LCD screen, as well as the PCB board, is established using tape that has conductive particles inside of it that are responsible for creating the electrical connection. First, this conductive tape is attached to the connection area of the LCD screen. After that, a device called heat seal is used. Heat seal has metal plate that is used to press the two surfaces together and because the metal plate is heated, conductive tape melts and bonds the two surfaces. And at the same time, because of the conductive particles that are inside the tape, an electrical connection is established between the two surfaces. After the metal plate cools down, the pressure is removed and the bonding procedure is finished. The same procedure can be applied to bond the PCB board to the FPC. Now when we have looked at the two most common ways of establishing electrical connections in LCD industry, we can move to the practical part of this video. First let's look how we can fix the connection problem for a screen that has zebra connectors. 
Here's my car's odometer screen and you can clearly see that it has some problems. First let's remove the screen with zebra connectors from the dashboard. Here's the screen with zebra connectors and you can see that they are attached to the LCD. You should be able to easily remove them from the screen and there should be no negative effect by doing this. Once you have removed zebra connectors from the LCD screen, you have to clean the connection area of the LCD screen as well as the connection areas of the zebra connectors and also the connections on the PCB board. You can see me doing that here right now. In my case I'm using a piece of cloth and ethanol to do this. I'm using ethanol because it dries very fast and it's also good in removing all kinds of residue that's on the surface that you're cleaning. But you can also try to use some other type of alcohol or alcohol based glass cleaner. Unfortunately I don't have the exact uh, explanation why these connections go bad over some time. But my guess would be that it's due to some electrochemical reactions that occur between the LCD screen's electrical connection and the zebra connector. This is why it looks like that cleaning these surfaces helps to fix the problem. Once I was done with the cleaning, I assembled everything back together. Here you can see the result. The screen works as brand new. Now when we have learned how to fix the problem with zebra connectors, we will look how to do the same thing in case if your LCD screen has FPC instead of zebra connector. I have to say that it's a lot more challenging than the first case, but it's still possible if you know what you're doing. Because I don't have LCD screen with bad FPC connections, I have to create one. Here you can see an old calculator that I have and I will intentionally damage the connection between the LCD screen and the FPC. After some two minutes of me intentionally trying to damage the connections, at last you can see the results. The last few segments of the LCD screen aren't showing up anymore, as well as the error message at the top of the screen. Now we can try to re-establish the connections that we just damaged. First and simplest approach would be to apply pressure on the FPC so that it presses against the LCD screen's connection array. But as you can imagine that's a very unreliable approach and it would work only in very few specific cases when you are able to somehow maintain the pressure. Of course you can try that anyway before going to a harder approach as I'm doing it here right now. That way at least you might get a better understanding which part of the connection is bad. Second approach would be to use your soldering iron as a form of heat seal. What I will do, I will use my soldering iron to heat up the FPC while pressing it to the LCD connection area. That way I will heat up the conductive tape that is between the two surfaces and hopefully I will re-establish the connection that is damaged. First thing that I'm doing here is I'm using my multimeter to adjust the temperature of the soldering iron so that it would be somewhere around 200 degrees. Once I adjusted the temperature I also tried out the cooling process. Because the temperature was falling too slowly after turning off the soldering iron I used a sponge that is moisted in tap water to increase the cooling speed. After trying this out I felt ready for the real deal. So what I'm doing here, I first apply a piece of foil on the connection area that I am going to repair. Then I heat it up for a few seconds using my soldering iron while applying a firm pressure on the connection.
Then I turn off the soldering iron and cool it using the sponge. At the first moment checking the result, it looks like I have failed. But after cleaning off the leftover water and having a second look, I realize that I have managed to partly re-establish the connections. It looks like that now there are only two segments that aren't working properly. Seeing this, I am of course going for the second round to fully re-establish the connections. So once more I am applying the foil, only this time I am using a larger piece because I don't want the water from the sponge to get everywhere while cooling the soldering iron. Now I am repeating the same steps as the previous time. I heat up the connection area while applying the pressure. Then I turn off the soldering iron and cool it down with the sponge. So now testing my calculator, I can see that I have managed to fully re-establish the connections. I know that this is not the most reliable and the professional fix of all times, but in case if you don't have anything to lose, it's something that you can try to do yourself at home. Maybe one of the things that I would have changed if I would do this for the second time, I would start at a lower temperature for the soldering iron. Also, I would use a larger piece of foil from the start, because that protects the FPC, wires and plastic parts from the heat as well as the water. So if you found this video useful, let me know by smashing that like button, and in case if you have any LCD related topics that you would want me to look at, leave it in the comments, and I might create a video about it. So that's it for today, and thank you for watching.